All right, I'm excited to be here with Tara Whitney, and we're going to be uh, talking about some of the progress she's making in her business so that you can learn. Those of you watching this will be able to learn from some of the things that she is doing, has done. You'll get encouraged by her progress. And this is what I, uh, I'm going to be start doing more of these kind of case study interviews. Um, Tara is in my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group. And uh, Tara, it's great to have you here. I'll let you kind of do a brief intro and we'll get into, um, you know, the progress and the learning. Absolutely. Great to be with you, George. My name is Tara Whitney and I am a certified intuitive eating counselor. I'm a transformational coach and I guide professional women, business leaders and entrepreneurs to reclaim time energy and their presence that they've lost to emotional eating and dieting. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, let's see here. The first question I'll ask, I mean, there's, there's actually several topics we can talk about that I think are useful for, for, for the audience. Um, why don't we start with one of my favorite topics, which is productivity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know, because I think everyone can benefit whether or not they are what, whatever level of business they're at. So um, you have been working on your productivity in the past, you know, couple of weeks as you've been in Master Heart. Um, you can also talk about anything prior to that too, you know. Yeah. I don't have to take credit for, for anything. <laughs> All I care about <laughs> is that you're, you're, you know, that you're observing your own journey of growth and, and there's something that I think will be helpful for, for everybody watching. So um, yeah, so tell us, what, what have you been, been learning regarding your own, process of working. Sure. Well, I think there's perspective and then there's action. Mm -hmm. In the past, I was really good at working hard and keeping busy. Mm. So before I came to your work, if you said, you know, what are you busy with? I probably would have listed out a whole bunch of things. But now what's changed, and I did take your joyful productivity class, is that I infuse a lot of my own intention in the time that I spend and your energy reboot. I know it's, you know, infamous at this point, but I do that five or six times a day, usually right before I'm about, I'm changing tasks. So I do that in my transition. And what that helps me with is it makes me, it, it, it puts me into a place where I, one, am mindful about what I'm about to do, but then I'm also clear about what I need, what I want when I'm doing that task. So if I'm writing, I might be asking for clarity. If, if, I, if I'm doing something challenging, I might ask for strength or for anything. And so that to me has been, um, create, has created a lot more quality, a higher quality in how I'm spending my time. And I, um, I find I get really excited about my days because I, because of, of this small piece and it's not small because it really helps me navigate my time really well. Mm. Oh, I, love I that. also, oh, good. Yeah, no, I, I just, I just say, I mean, I'm so glad and, and it seems so uh, for the people who haven't yet developed a practice of doing energy reboot or whatever it is that people do use to check in with themselves multiple times a day. Again, you know, for those who don't know the energy reboot, I will put a link in the notes of the video so you can actually read about it or watch me <laughs> practice it. Um, but it is meant to be short. Um, it's not something that takes half an hour. Well, I mean, everyone has a different length of how long they do it. But for me, it takes me, I mean, literally 20 or 30 seconds. And I end up doing it multiple times an hour because I catch myself in a less than, you know, optimal state. And I'm like, hmm, okay, let me just do, do some breathing. It's essentially breathing. The way I do it is essentially breathing with some intentional, you know, intention put into it. But it, for those who don't, don't know that practice, it seems so and almost silly that you have to check in with yourself. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe everyone watching this at this point in my audience knows how important it is. But it's like the power of cons consistent pauses throughout the day that are intentional, that are, that are embodied, that are um, sort of like 
optimistic or or connected to an optimistic view of life and existence mm -hmm. is I, I don't know i mean it really had just like you say it's it changed my life and i'm glad that it's it's making a benefit for you too but go ahead you were yeah. saying well I, I mean now uh you've reminded me that i share the practice with my clients because a lot because really at the core of the work i'm doing is i'm connecting them with their body and you know, the second my, so it's four, four breaths, you know, but the second breath is awareness. And I, I check in, I, I do that, you know, internal check in and, and then it's like, thank you. Thank you for waking up enough to recognize what's going on in my body, because I know that my work and my business is coming from my body. So doesn't it make sense that I want to check in and see how it's doing, ask it for something, let it be a conduit to what I want to offer the world. And so it, it's, it's pretty magical and it, it can elude us in its simplicity. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So you were going to say there's anything else about uh, your productivity practice? Yeah, I just jumped into Focus Mate and which is yes. something that you're always, um, using I know and some other uh, another other members of Master Heart are using as well. And I use that is just that collaborative online place where we can be productive and we use 50 minutes of, of a time to work with somebody online. But yet when I schedule it during maybe times of my day where I might be a little more inefficient or I might creep into other maybe non-productive things, it's a really nice boost because I'm able to say, oh, 15 minutes, can I get this one thing accomplished? And then I do, and then I move on to something else. Yeah. So, so yeah. far so good. I'm, I'm that, so glad you you started using it. And, and it's another one of those things that people, before they have tried it, it might sound strange. Like, wait, mm. I'm getting, on a video call with somebody and we're not talking. I mean, we, we might talk in the first 30 seconds or minute to say, hey, what are you up to in this hour? What am I up to? Okay, fine, let's check in in the first minute. And then we just keep the camera on while we yeah. work on our thing. And it sounds so strange and it sounds like, well, is it really gonna, it has been life-changing for me. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, I do it literally uh, at least three hours every day, Monday through Saturday, um, mm. sometimes up to six hours a day. Uh, and I now have done it for several years. I was part of Focusmate. I was one of the original users. I mean, one of the first thousand users, I think. And yeah, I, I just prom I promise everybody watching this, if you haven't yet tried it, it is a revelatory experience. At least you should try it and see if it mm. works for you. I have a Focusmate group that I will put a link below. Um, now I have to say, people who join my Focusmate group, what that means is that you get paired up with me and others in my group more often. I definitely allow my master art members to be part of the group and some of my core students, but, um, but I'll, I'll, now that I've said it, I'll put the link below. People can join my group, but I do, I do hold people to a higher standard who are part of my group. You gotta show up on time mm -hmm. and your lighting has to be decent. Meaning like right now, uh, you know, I can see your face just fine. You can see my face just fine. Sometimes people are kind of in the dark. You can't see them. That's not, that's not okay for my group anyway. So anyway, it is a wonderful focus tool. So glad you're using it. Mm. Um, uh, is there anything else about productivity or can we, should we talk about your content now, nowadays? Yeah, let's talk about content. Yeah, yeah so, that would be great. So maybe you can give a sense of uh, what, maybe like a kind of bit of a before and after. So maybe before, mm -hmm. you know, we started working together, maybe your content was this way or mm -hmm. you were unclear about this. And now, now that you've been practicing something different or trying different things, what is it? How does it sure. feel now? What's it like now? Yeah. Well, probably the biggest thing was before I, I got introduced to your work and started really following your many processes, I would say, I was often trying to sell from my content. And I, cause I thought that was the right thing to do. Now I wasn't trying to sell in a pushy way but a lot of what I was doing was I'm gonna write this really smart email 
that has emotion and understands a problem, maybe offers a and then there's someone something that I'm, you know, currently launching. And there were a couple of things about that that I didn't realize was really hurting or hindering my content production. One, I had, I was putting pressure on myself. So I felt like if I was writing really good content, then that meant I would do a job. So, um, and then, and then if no one bought from the content, I would be like, what, what's wrong with the content that I just wrote? Cause I thought that was pretty good. Or people would say that was a nice piece, but then they still wouldn't buy. Um, and then, so when I was producing content in line with offers, it was exhausting to me because one, I was completely attached to what the content could do for me. And then two, I often felt so depleted after I put out a lot of content thinking that it needed, you know, it needed to get me something. And so obviously that was a recipe for um, not a lot of creativity, a lot of pressure and not a lot of fun, I think would probably be the bottom line. But um, what I, how I now look at my content is um, in a couple different ways. One, I love producing content with no ask, with like no, nothing. Just, I'm gonna just share this because I wanna share it. And there's nothing that I'm selling. Although I still do sell, but I'm not selling from it with the intention of that. Um, two, I have completely embraced the belief that my content is a catalyst for my own transformation and my business's transformation. And to me, that means I am really curious around what content I get excited about sharing. So when I have an idea and it comes in and now the ideas are coming in fast and furious, I have to write them all down pretty quickly because I, I often will think I need to get this out like ASAP because this is so good. Um, but I'm noticing that I have this platform, my own internal platform for thinking I am meant to share this and I have full permission to share this. This is my coming from my own growth and this will help me grow my business. Um, so it's really freeing. If my content production feels really freeing right now. Wow. I am so happy to, <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yes. And, and just to clarify for everyone watching this, um, then you, uh, there was a bit of an internet issue, uh, but you, you used to write or make videos like with this ulterior motive, actually you were conscious of it that, okay. Or a newsletter or whatever that like, okay, I'm, I'm writing something and they better sign up, they better buy, they better inquire uh, because this is such a good article or such a good video or whatever. And now you're doing it because it is public journaling, right? <laughs> Sometimes I call it that. It's like, it's like, it's something that is meaningful for you. You share it knowing that you know, it's probably gonna be meaningful for other people too. At least yeah. people who are similar to you will find this meaningful because you know, um, yeah, you're, you're kind of on a similar, similar journey with your, with your clients, of course. And if people find it meaningful and they don't feel like they're being sold because they're not, mm -hmm. they're much more likely to say, who's Tara Whitney? Who, you know, let me go and see what else she's about. What, what, you know. And then over time, they, they follow your content more and more. There's trust there. I love it. I love it. Um, how does that, so you make I mean, you're actually, uh, you know, you, you have, you, you write, you make videos and you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. So you actually have all three forms and now you're also making the carousel images, right? So I, you're, I just did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I just saw it. So good job. So you really, you really are experimenting with all these different yeah. forms and I love it. And uh, yeah. you'll, you'll, I'm sure you'll find your rhythm with it. So, yeah. but you, you mentioned that you also sell. And I think that's important. You know, I, yeah. I always tell people, listen, content as ministry, content as exploration and personal journal, mm -hmm. but public journaling, but that's 80%. There's 20% mm -hmm. of what you put out there, your posts, your article or your newsletters or whatever. 
should make an offer. Otherwise, they, they think you're just writing for fun. So yeah. how is that going? How is making an offer? How is that going these days? Mm. Well, it feels really light. Um, I just, I'm finishing up a course right now and I approached it so differently than I have in the past. And it was all just a light launch. It was, I don't know, maybe I sold, it was, it was um, maybe two emails, a couple of posts on Facebook, you know, but there was no, there was no pressure around it. And now I have the energy for my next course or my next group coaching program. And so the biggest value for me was that it's all sustainable and, and I'm excited about my next offer and my next, um, whatever that is, I, I'm debating between two of them, but I really feel energized around that. Um, but that came from two places, George, that I want to make sure I'm really clear about. One, one place was your, your business planning class where you took us through the stages of business and you were able to, the levels of business, excuse me, I think, and, and you were able to, um, I was able to see myself in a certain stage or level of business. And for, for that, I felt relief because I, I, even though this is only my third year of being full-time in my business, I, I kept thinking I should be in a different place. My business should be bigger. I should have more clients. I should blah, 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 all of that. And when I took your business plan in class and you said, why would you expect if you sold two, why would you expect 20? What, what numbers did you read? What information did you see that created that expectation? And I think either somewhere along the way, because maybe I'm watching people who are filling their classes or they're saying they're filling their classes, that therefore I should be in that place. Um, it left me feeling like, oh, I must be doing something wrong in my business. And so, so that was a huge shift for me. And as a result, I was able to create a business plan that is doable. It's a doable business plan based off of real numbers, <laughs> which I've never done before, which is ironic since I'm a CPA. But like, this was the first month, January was the first month I took my planned information and my actual data, I compared them and I was pretty close. I, I mean, I was pretty close, which <laughs> yeah. in the number I had for my course was exactly the number that I sold. And <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's beautiful. I'm, I, I mean, to me, I'm killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I, it's important to, I want to share how, like how I did get there because it wasn't like, oh, I have lightness around courses right now. I created a plan where I said, I want to launch nine courses in 2021. I'm doing it based on real time data and I'm doing it in a way where I have confidence and I'm relaxed about how I'm executing against that plan. Oh my God, that's music to my ears. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing because first of all, you are redefining success. Mm -hmm. um, you are no longer taking some random, really random number someone else gave you to say, well, that's what success is. You say, no, wait a second. Success can be defined in a doable way based on my current you know, level and stage. And therefore, guess what? You can celebrate more often. So it's yeah. like success, yeah. success, success. Who has more momentum? The one saying success, 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 or the one going, oh, failure again, oh, failure again, because I can't, you know, I, I can't, I can't jump seven feet yet. You know, it's like, well, of course you can. You haven't practiced. Your muscles aren't even there to jump four feet. Now why seven feet, you know? Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. like, but yes, one day, 
by continuing to practice those muscles, you will jump seven feet or even 10 feet. I don't know what the high jump usual is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's the, that's the idea. I mean, in our business, it's like, okay, right now you're making this much. And of mm -hmm. course, next month, it's hopefully a little bit more, probably mm -hmm. a little bit more, but the trend mm -hmm. is going in this direction rather than yes. some expectation of like this. It's like, if you go like this, is it really sustainable or is it just going to go back down? You know, right. which creates a lot of angst. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, well, and I always yeah. wanted to know, Yes. how do I grow my business? What are the things I need to do to grow my business? And it was always a mystery. It was always like, well, you know, I'm hearing this information and this information, but to now see the levers and then, oh, I press on this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I do this. Look at that. And so that's really been huge because now I feel like I'm in the real driver's seat in my business now, which isn't really how I have felt in the past. I love it. Yes. And the key I hope to it all is that it is joyfully sustainable. Like you can, right. you can actually see yourself doing it as you, as you continue honing the process of daily work and of monthly and quarterly um, trends that you can see of some, okay, I can see this as a long-term thing. And if you have staying power, that's really, that's really where the real power is because that's really where the real growth happens, you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have a few minutes left and I wanna make sure people know something about you. And, you know, you've taught, for example, you mentioned that you're, you're creating nine courses this year. Just FYI, for everyone who's listening and watching, you don't have to create nine courses, <laughs> um, but Tara is already, I mean, you, you've actually have years of kind of practicing certain business skills. And so now you're implementing and, and I think you can create nine courses, probably not a great thing for anyone to start with who's just starting out, but, mm -hmm. but tell us though, what are some of the topics that you're going to be teaching this year? Sure. Yeah. I teach four topics. Okay. So the first topic is around emotional eating and that's the topic that i the course I'm just wrapping up right now. The second topic is around intuitive eating, which is really a, a pro, pro, profound and powerful movement that's happening right now in the health and wellness space. As I mentioned, I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor. And, and so what is intuitive eating just in a nutshell for those who- Sure, have, it's, it's an anti-diet approach to eating where it prioritizes eating to satisfaction, but eating based on body cues. Mm. So that being able nice. to, re yeah, I know, right? But, but of course, if you're aware of your body <laughs> cues, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's just it. It's, yeah. it's tuning back into the body, trusting our bodies yeah. and knowing that, you know, it has the wisdom to guide us into eating in a really nourishing place. Um, the third place is around, the third um, area is around body image and guiding people to really appreciate, love, respect, and honor their bodies. And then the fourth is the one I'm playing with a little bit, which is, um, I feel like now I have the, I can give my permission, myself permission to do, which is talking about in general, like empowerment, like how do we really be visible, bring our power back within ourselves, really create our voice, um, go after the things we want in our life, be safe being seen. So I'm exploring that, but I'm really excited to start to play in that space in 2021. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I will have the link to your website and any other you know, social media link. I think it's good for people since we talked about content to kind of see at least your Facebook business page and your Instagram and, you know, whatever we, you know, we want to, you want to share, we do that. Thank you so much for willingness to kind of share your progress and learnings. Um, I hope this is encouraging for everyone who's watching this. Feel free to comment below if you want to ask any questions or share your own reflections. Thank you so much, Tara. Yeah, you're so welcome, George. I appreciate it. And thanks for just all your teachings. It's really changed my business and myself so much. It is my honor. It's my honor and my, my deepest gratitude to know that it's actually making a difference. So thank yeah, you. it absolutely is. Thank you.